Debt, fear, relationships, the children, your health, work. When you want to give up and you need courage to continue, take heart and stay tuned as RJ Jackson writes her signature message of hope on your heart. You don't have to live where you're dying and you don't have to die where you're living. Like every show of Conversations on Courage, you'll be informed, inspired, and encouraged to find the courage you need to succeed at home, work, and in your business. Get your pen and paper. You'll want to take notes. And now, your host, R.J. Jackson, The Courage Giver. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome, and welcome back to Conversations on Courage, where we provide you with stories and strategies. No, not just any kind of strategies, success strategies on confidence and courage. Now listen, we are guaranteeing you that we're going to saturate your heart and give you information that's going to cause transformation that will allow you to live your best life ever and not later Live it now. So we're excited about this opportunity to help you live out your greatness. After all, you know what I say, you're a game changer. And there is greatness inside of you, and the world awaits your greatness. I'm R.J. Jackson, the Courage Giver, and I'm your host for today and really excited and honored to be able to be with you and walk alongside of you and remind you that God has not forgotten about you. Listen, people always ask me, so what does RJ stand for? I get asked that question so many times. And people are literally disappointed when I say, it doesn't stand for anything. It's really my name. I mean, they really want me to make something up, but the best and the most I can ever tell them is, that's my name, but I can tell you what I stand for. I stand for authenticity, and I stand for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it doesn't matter what you call me. I'm still going to stand for that. And don't get me wrong. I am often called many things like AJ, CJ, JR, my grandchildren call me sweetie, my kids call me half the time for money. I'm telling you, people just call me all kind of things. But here's what I want you to call me. Friend. Yes. I would be honored if you would call me friend. Thinking of friends, I'm excited today to bring to you a friend, a sister, a mother, a wife, an entrepreneur, a woman who's going to help us understand our man. Ooh, I know y'all ready to hear about this one, right? So we're going to talk about our men and our money today. We're going to have a conversation on courage that will help you grow, that will help you go beyond where you are and help you get closer to where God wants you to be. This is an amazing opportunity for you to grow and change. So if you're ready, if you're ready, that means you have your pen, your paper, your journal, your Bible, you have the right attitude, and you are ready for the journey. So if you're ready, let's go. Join me in welcoming to the Conversations on Courage today, Julie Mercadal. Julie, welcome to Conversations on Courage. Thank you. You're so welcome. We're excited. Super excited to have this conversation on courage with you and talk about our man and our money. Um, besides our children, those are the two things that's on the top of the list for us as women because when it comes to anything else, well, we kind of put ourselves last. But our man, our money, our kids, oh, yeah, it's right up there. So let's just go ahead and jump into the conversation. And as a mom as a wife, an entrepreneur, and not just any entrepreneur, an entrepreneur who works with her husband. Now that takes courage. (laughs) (laughs) Tell us, how do you do it? How do you use your courage every day to not only get up in the morning with him, be at home with him in the evening, but work with him all day and work around money? We want to know. 
Uh, and a lot of people um, question us sometimes, too, when they find out we're with each other that much. But um, we kind of just tell people, you know, we married each other because we like to be around each other. And um, a lot of times people um, go separate ways all day long, and they never see their spouse all day long because they work opposite you know, shifts and things like that. And I think for us, it's just, we just remind ourselves every day that, you know, we married each other to be with each other. It's your best friend usually, right? right. And so, um, so that's kind of where, how we see it. Um, is every day, you know, a bouquet of roses? Probably not. You know, there's days where we do divide and conquer and we go separate, you know, one's at the office or one's at home, um, you know, and then, but most of the time we are together. And so while you're together, you're actually working, putting your courage together, and you're helping women, you in particular, are helping women with their finances, helping them actually with their marriage as well because you're the example of what it looks like to work in your marriage, with your marriage, and on your finances. So how do you actually help women with their finances um, I think everybody's situation is different a little bit with finances, but I think if you're centering your life around God, finances is just a part of it. And so just teaching people to, you know, maybe not not be so quick to make decisions when it comes to money. Most people make decisions quick with finances, and then they pray and listen for God for direction for other things. Um, so it's kind of just incorporating everything the same, including finances. And so as a result of putting God first in our finances, how do you see giving as a part of getting our finances together? Or do you? Is giving a a good part of financial planning or working our budget? How does that play out? Yeah, we we believe as a couple, and then um, what we teach people is, um, I mean, it's biblically based to give. Um, it says in the Bible you should give first. And um, I think for most of us it's hard. Um, but I think if you kind of – I kind of joked around one time and I said, okay, I'm going to test God the first time I actually, you know, tithed without questioning and years and years ago. And it was kind of like I'm going to test him and see, uh, which is probably not the correct conversation to have with the Lord. But um, I think we all do it. We don't like to talk about it. And, um, and you know, God always delivers, and he always takes care of us. It may not be in our timing, but he always takes care of us. And um, giving is just a way to show that you, you know, that you trust in the Lord and that you have faith in what he's going to do in your life. So when it, when it comes to giving, is that something, and I'd like to hear you talk a little bit about budgeting more, is that something we should budget in? Or should we just see what's left, or should we just go with the fact, which is reality, like I could barely pay my bills, I'm paying Robin Paul to pay Peter, and forget about Sam, he could just go somewhere because I don't (laughs) even have enough for him at all. Like, how do I do this giving thing? Like, where does it fit in financially? Well, I think if you, kind of like I said before, if you test God and you actually give uh, you're supposed to give off of your gross is what we've always been taught, and that's what we teach. And um, when you give off of your gross, that means you're not paying the bills first. You're, you're giving. And um, when you do that, you kind of do have the money left over. A lot of the times when we run across people that say they can't, um, you know, give um, when it comes to finances, When you look at their budget and what they're spending money on, a lot of times they're spending money on things that are kind of wants instead of needs. And so, you know, maybe you're paying $200 for that special cable package, but you can't give. Well, that's kind of like a contradiction. Um, I know in some cases situations change, and you can kind of work through that and build in your growing, but something, you know, starting somewhere, God knows your heart and your situation. So I think it's just kind of a reality check you have to look at. Why aren't you giving? So when I hear you talk about giving and giving your first, are you, are you referring to tithes 
giving your tithes or just giving in general or both? Um, I guess that's probably more per se for tithing. Um, giving, I think, in my opinion, is, uh, you know, I think that's kind of not a black and white answer. Um, okay. I think that's more of if God puts something on your heart, it's whether you're listening to him or not when it comes to giving. Awesome. You talked about trusting God. Um, how, do, how do I say I'm trusting God, but yet I budget my money? Should I budget? Should I write down on a piece of paper what my budget is? Or should I just say, you know, I pay my tithes and I'm just going to trust God to just work it out. I don't need to write it down. <laughs> yeah. And when there's actually people that do that, um, and they're usually frustrated um, is what we find. And so, you know, God also tells us to be mindful, and he tells us to use his wisdom that he gave us. And so I think writing a budget down puts things in perspective, uh, and that's kind of your part of, uh, you know, watching where you're, the money that God gave you is going. Um, so knowing that is good. Um, sometimes people don't want to write it down because reality is, is they don't want to have to give up something they know they shouldn't be doing to make different choices. Um, So that's typically, you know, our human selves. We don't want to, you know, have to give up something. Maybe we know we shouldn't spend money on so we can give or things like that. And so I think putting it on paper is kind of your part in the situation with God. And putting it on paper, as you said, gives us a perception or it gives us a a view of Mm -hmm. where our money is actually going, what we're actually doing. And like you said, sometimes we don't really want to see that. Because at the end of the day, we don't want to see, like, where we either wasted or mismanaged our money. So it's easier Mm -hmm. to just say, eh, no, I don't need to write it down. But one Mm -hmm. of the things you do, which I appreciate knowing about you, is that you help give people direction and vision as a leader. You help them look at where they're going and put point them in a direction that God wants them to go with their finances. And so in working with the budget and helping people see that, what's one of the generic or general things you would do to get a person started on a budget? Uh, For a budget, basically, um, if you've never done a budget, an easy way to kind of see where money really is going is to kind of get a calendar and um, every day write down what you spend or what you pay, Um, when it comes to bills, how much it is. And then um, like when you get paid, you can put in the positive money coming in, like your paycheck. Um, And then at the end of the month, you can kind of see where all the money is going. You can separate it. Um, Basically, you're just taking the money that's coming in and you're subtracting the money that's going out. But for most people, they just have no idea where the little stuff goes. And sometimes the little stuff adds up to a lot at the end of the month. So. Like going into the 99-cent store. You go in there thinking 99 cents, and you come out spending $99, and then you go, right. well, what did I buy? <laughs> Usually yeah. stuff you don't even use again, right? Right. Or, I mean, if you have kids, too, you know, kids need money for this, they need money for that, and especially if they're in activities and things like that, a lot of times we don't see that type of thing or you know, how much we spend on our way to work or those stops at Starbucks are pretty common. Um, You know, they just add up. So you suggest we get a calendar, write down how much money we're spending every day to start to see where money is actually going. Mm -hmm. And then from there we see that it's going to Starbucks or to the fast food place, what's the next recommendation? What should we do? I mean, because, hey, I have to eat, and I don't have time right. to make my lunch, so i got to stop and get a salad every day. Right. And there's, I guess you have to, once you know where the money is going, you have to decide what's important and what is it really costing you. And um, there's a difference between price and cost. So, you know, maybe the Starbucks is only $5 every day, but if you times that by every day out of the month, the total is what it's costing you, and maybe you're not saving any money. So that, you know, I, I don't have a calculator in front of me, but if you, you know, times that by the month, what if you could 